Good afternoon. My name is Anton Morin. For more than 17 years, I'm dealing with analytics and research of market, marketing researches for different brands, big and small ones, and a big amount of questions which emerge now concern the understanding of people. That is why today I'd like to speak about the important topic, how it is the best, is what's the best way to understand people? Because this understanding will give you an opportunity to offer people what they need. For the sake of which people will come back to you again and again. And what do the people need? What do they want? That's a nice question. Do you remember there was a wonderful film, uh, What the Woman Want? Have you seen it? Yes, uh, you will not let me lie. Then the Mel Gibson character played a person with a certain super ability. He could read the women's thoughts. And uh, he totally repaired his personal life. And he also created a nice ad campaign because he understood what was in the people's minds. That was a cool super ability, the telepathy. As soon as you thought about that, you felt it, and you understood everything. But it does not happen like that in life. But there is such a thing as empathy, an ability to feel and understand people. And this is the chance already, then, the chance to develop this skill in you. Because have you ever heard about such a person like Leo Sushar? He's a mentalist, the person who, is, according to the gestures, can understand everything. He can guess the PIN codes of the credit cards. He can guess the birth date and almost everything. Moreover, he can get the information out of the person and vice versa, to put this information into the person. Once I've seen the show with him, when he asked an audience to draw a symbol which just came up to their mind, and all the 200 of the people draw the same, drew the same. Well, of course, he just uploaded something into their minds, but this very fact shows this wonderful ability which can be developed. So what do the people need? So there are lots of different options because people need different things. There are lots of people and all of the people are different, like those m and -Ms. Someone needs prices, someone needs super serving, someone needs an, uh, a unique entourage and design of interior. So it's very complicated to create a peculiar offer for every single person. So what should we do with that? Of course, we can find a solution. And you, as the professionals of the hospitality industry, you have your own approaches to this complicated issue. So today, I'd like to share with you a nice checked way, which I hope will be in your storage of knowledge and will help you understand people better. Rather long ago, the scientists, sociologists, psychologists, and who else, marketologists, they invented that different people can be grouped according to certain characteristics and indicators and parameters. This could be profits, this could be behavior, or their other settings, what they believe in. And thanks to that, we can offers something special to each of that group, some product, some service, some advertisement, which will trigger them. Exactly. And it simplifies our task, because there is no necessity to invent for every single person their own solution. So it really simplifies our lives and isn't it and helps us to find the key to the people who are coming to our restaurants, cafes, hotels, and so on. Recently, I've heard a story about the woman who worked at the wardrobe. She's, she increased the profit uh, two times. Have you heard about that story? Yes, lots of you have heard it. So there was a very uh, simple story that a young girl came uh, who was working at the cloakroom. She came to her boss and said, I know how, to how we should increase the revenue. There are lots of people coming to us. And unfortunately, we cannot offer the perfect serving for all of them. So we need to focus upon the people with the highest 
profits who leave the biggest sums of money at our place, let me help with that issue because I can see which cars they drive, what clothes they wear. So me, as a cloakroom attendant, I can mark, I can label them with big toys. And that's what they did. They focused upon those segments, separate segments by this cloakroom attendant to give them certain offers and suggestions. So, of course, they increased the revenue. It worked. There were lots of battles around that. Was it true or not true? Whether it really happened or is just a fiction story? Uh, but honestly speaking, the only thing is important for me in this story how much they increase the revenue, but the whole principle that understanding the people who are coming to you better, you can influence your own business just directly. That is why we'll speak today with you about the tool which is created just for that, about the tool which will allow us to divide the people according to their little boxes to understand how to interact with each of these boxes. And this a tool has the name of the generation theory. Have you heard about it? Perfect. You've heard about that. So let's conduct an experiment. I will need you to conduct three easy actions. Do you have the cell phone? So please do the following. Take your cell phone, turn it on just to see the screen, and show me the screen. OK. That's with, uh, let me let me take a picture because it's really beautiful. So please show me the screens. Let them not dim. I want to see them. Perfect. Super. Thank you. So what did I want to check with you? I can see that approximately 99% of you have smartphones. At least I saw bigger screens. I didn't see smaller ones, maybe because there is not such a big number of people with those screens, because the technologies are very rapidly penetrating into our lives. The thing that all of us have smartphones proves that if we conducted this experiment five years ago, the percentage of the people with the smartphones would be lower. At least half of you maybe would have smartphones. So the technologies penetrate into our lives so quickly that it can be seen at the physical level. A very simple example. About three years ago, when I went to my work, I had a cell phone, of course, and three SIM cards. Uh, three cards. Um, the underground, the office, and then Apple Pay came. One of the cards just vanished because it turned out to be in the cell phone. And now you will not be amazed with virtual reality terms or 3D printing or blockchain terms, right? You will not be surprised. Or maybe some drones or UAVs and so on. So all of that is so close and um, engaged by, uh, engages into our lives that those technologies dramatically speed up our lives. We take decisions quickly. Yeah? because the information is affordable and accessible within the two clicks. We disseminate the information much quicker. We find it much quicker. And all of that changes our life a lot. Because whatever took much more time before, now is done much quicker. So now we have the change of the culture, the change of the people who are brought up by this epoch. A very simple example. When I was a little boy, that's me. I'm 80 years old here. Just to see a cartoon, I needed to take the following. I took the pencil, I took father's newspaper of the news, a big paper, and then I had to find the cartoon to mark the time when the cartoon is broadcast. My children have a totally different approach. They are eight, eight years old now, too. Well, they're twins. This is not the double photo. They're just twins. And they know that any cartoons are accessible just within one click. And for them, whatever is needed will be done, will be given to them in an instant, any content. How does it influence their further development? My generation get used that to get something, you need to work hard to wait a bit. And after then, you will get something. This generation got used to the excess, one click excess. And any long action which needs efforts and uh, patience, it leads to certain complications. So this, at this physical level, this is how it is done. Two scientists noticed that about 30 years ago, Neil Hove and William Strauss. And they 
invented this generation theory, they noticed that all of the people can be divided into several similar characteristics groups. Moreover, they will repeat in every big period of time, a kind of a epoch or a hundred of years, a century. So this theory was so universal that in fact it's working in all of the countries because all of the countries, well, except the most exotic, they can, are going through the similar stages of development. They're more connected with the technologies. Sometimes they delayed, sometimes they postponed, sometimes they speed up, well, depending on the technological development of the country. So in fact, in all of the countries, we have a certain institutes or uh, institutions or people who research the generation theory to give whatever this or that generation needs. I will show you now several video reels about what each of generation represents, and then we'll speak a bit how it can be useful for us to separate those people, to understand what they need, and for us to work with them further on. Seniors, the people who were born in 1946-1965. So we announce you the message from the news agency about the first flight of a human into the space. Magazine for production of automobiles. As for the car sales, we have the first part of the new car of Zaporozhets. It's a very beautiful car, isn't it? Style of life. There is a traditional and the new generation of the pensioners. The traditional pensioners are the least provided uh, groups of population. They help their family with time and participants, mostly to decrease their financial expense. They grow the products, the food at their country houses. The new generation. The representatives of the new generations go on working after retirement. They have time for their favorite hobbies. They're active participants of their exhibitions, museums, and theaters. They deal with health, and they have a very active style lifestyle. Myth busting. A myth is that the pensioners spend lots of time at the country houses and orchards. Yes, there are some pensioners like that, but there are pensioners who like active relaxation with their families and friends and travels. The myth, the lack of money uh, makes the people uh, modest when they choose the food. Yes, but they like to value little uh, joys and funds. Sometimes they work part-time to have additional profit for themselves. A myth. The pensioners don't deal with digital technologies. The TV is still taking the first place as a source of information, but 38% of the pensioners are using Internet. At the basic level, they understand the modern ways of communications with the world, messengers, Skype, social networks. Lots of them are playing online games and are interested into the, in the opportunities of the gadgets. So this typology reminds my parents a lot because they grew up during the Soviet space. Uh, they uh, had the uh, values of modesty and so on. What would you offer them if they came to your bar? Well, just a top of the mind. Vodka. That's a nice option because at least it's familiar. That's an interesting option. But of course, they won't come to you. Well, first of all, because they don't have that much money. And secondly, because they are rationalists and they will just go to the shop. They buy some alcohol and drink it with their friends uh, at home. But if they came to your place, well, maybe I would fantasize a cocktail for them, which would na be named Vysotsky. I'm not a big fan of bar culture, but still, maybe this cocktail exists already. 
So maybe for them, the cocktail which consists of comprehensible ingredients would be more interesting for them. And according to the name of that cocktail, it would send it, them to the epoch which they are closely familiar with. Because just to pay for vodka or for whiskey, well, maybe they won't consider it reasonable. They will just buy it at the shop and drink it at home. Let's go on the next generation. The generation of X, the people who were born in Going into adult life was in the age of change. That is why Generation X values stability. These are the people who are used to building their career by the by. They prefer fixed salaries. Too much change in their salary makes them nervous. Work is more important than health. Most representative Generation X are not attentive enough to their health. They take some strong medicines, understanding this is not the best option for high quality recuperation. They are independent in everything. Generation X are the kids who uh, learned to be independent very early. They grew up in the conditions of big independence. Nobody told them what, how, and when to do. Surviving in the world of change and freedom, uh, their professionalism helped them with that, as well as their aspiration to be and to understand everything that they were doing and also making useful connections. A myth, lost generation. Even though there were wars and crises that this generation had to live through, many of them have adapted and formed their values and priorities themselves. It is the Generation X that most successful entrepreneurs of our days belong to. Myth. Generation X is not digital. Actually, more than a half of representatives of Generation X have smartphones. A third of them have tablets. They use them not just for talking, but also for going on the internet, listening to the music, taking pictures, navigation, and online shopping. Myth. Generation X doesn't know how to be happy in life. Absolute majority of Xs work. They have families, children, apartment, car, and country house. They are the driving force of the country's economy. The representatives of this generation have money and stability. They travel with their children and they continue learning the world themselves and they show it to the children. It is even a bit scary to think it's like it is my generation. I'm from the excess. I was born in the last quarter of that time. So what would you offer these people? Okay, wrong, classics, more. Whiskey. Yes, actually, this culture is a bit more open to go into the bars, for example. This is the culture which grew up in these turbulent times. You remember Victor Tsoi, that there are other, ba other bands, you know, punks not dead and all that. This is the age when people were rather rebellious. I would offer something rebellious to them as well, but something from clear ingredients. They may be a bit more than for seniors, for example, but remember, it was said that they like to learn everything themselves. It's interesting, actually, one of the barmen who used to work with the audience like that. For these people, he mixed cocktails and commented, like, I take whiskey or I take something else. I pour this much and that much, we get this. This is the process and this is the flavor that we get. And the older the excess are, the more important is for them to understand what was there and how it was combined. For younger exes like me, it would be enough for me to understand what is there in the cocktail and say, OK, I agree to that. Let's go on. Millennials. 
millennials born in 1983 to 1995. <laughs> you have recognized yourself, I'm not doubting that. Hashtag yellow. You only live once. Optimistic generation. Friends first. A lot of communication, you have to be always in touch. The whole life passes in social networks. This is the most selfish generation. They are looking for a job where they could show themselves and make something unique. Big companies do not allow them to be constantly on the peak. That is why they prefer co-working and startup projects. Myth, millennials are our future. Uh, the youngest millennial is 21 years old. The oldest one is 33. They are our present. In five years, there will be children and teenagers from Generation Z. Myth. Millennials refuse material wealth. No, they do not. Material wealth are accessible and the same for everyone. Emotional experience and impressions are the only things that they can use to, to single out. It is important for the generation to have self-expression, recognition, authenticity through experience and emotions. Myth millennials equals digital. Information equals speed. For gadget generation, for this generation, gadgets are just tools. They ensure convenience and speed for information access. You shouldn't overestimate their role in the life of millennials. It seems to me that many people recognize themselves. Actually, it is on this stage that people start applauding, probably because they often work with millennials. As far as I can see, this is probably the biggest audience going to the bars, who are open to that, who like this clear, understandable diverse. I'm not even going to uh, ask you what you would offer them. You know that well enough without me. Could you tell me, are there any people born after 1995? Oh, there are people like that. That's great. We haven't forgotten about you. You are Generation Z. And you are that future that uh, we have just mentioned in the video. And actually, very soon, this world is going to be yours. Because this year, the number of Zers actually has exceeded for now one per by 1% 1 of millennials. But then this number is going to grow. So it is very soon, it is your generation who is going to dictate to the market what they want and how they want that. And this is how we are going to talk much more about Generation Z, because just in several years, they are going to dictate to the market what they want. OK, then. And why is this extremely important in our Ukrainian team? Because there actually are lots of people like that. If we look at this distribution of people who won't take the youngest sets. There are already 6 million of that, and that's one-seventh of the population. If we take away the 60 plus, this is going to be an even bigger proportion. That is why let's look at the video about Z generation. Z generation, teenagers born in 1996 to 2003. Digital space. This is the first generation born in the age of the internet. They are digital natives. They do not know life before gadgets. 
they spent more eight hour, than eight hours a day with the devices. Generation Z has an app for every action. They use these apps just as naturally as breathe. Social networks keep Generation Z uh, up with the tendencies, the trends. That's why teenagers are connected to each other. They actively use chats, forums, group games, and communication through messengers. Teenagers are able to self-organize, gather teams, and distribute roles. Healthy lifestyle. Generation Z is not rebellious teenagers. Actually, very few have some addictive habits like cigarettes and alcohol. World Health Organization notes noticeable decrease in teenage pregnancy and consuming uh, addictive substances. They active, they participate in sports competition, they often go to guided tours. Miss, they are spoiled and selfish. 77% of teenagers are interested in working as volunteers to get experience. This is the green generation. 80% know about environmental issues. 76% care about that. Nature protection is one of the main values in their life. Myth, conflict of fathers and children. The conflict of generations is not that big. The teenagers have very tender relations with their, children, with their parents. They freely communicate with the adults, and they often act as mentors to them, for example, with gadgets. Parents make their contribution, they help and explain. They talk a lot, but they do not try to overcare for them. Miss, they have everything ready-made for them. They are independent. Thanks to a lot of cooking TV shows, they learn to cook well. Generation Z grows in the energy saving and modernization period. They have faced the crisis. That is why they think about economic processes and they care about prices. They would like to earn their own money. 77% believe that they should work more and better than the other generations to achieve success. Actually, I really like this generation. It is unusual, it is controversial. And now we are going to talk a bit more about that. But in the beginning, we are going to have another experiment with that. We'll need your smartphones for that. Now on the screen, I'm going to show a QR code. And you will have to turn on your camera. And you have to, uh, to actually use this camera. Then you can pass the uh, towards the There's going to be just one question, your year of birth. And now we are going to find out who is in that audience, even though I'm already guessing that. Okay. Everybody managed to scan it? No, not yet. Okay. Okay, now we're going to look among those who managed to do that. Could you please show us what we got here on the screen? Of course, millennials. Applaud yourselves. Okay, interesting. There are actually some X's. 10%. Great. You can put the presentation back. Great, we just have millennials here. This is your time and your industry. Okay, then. Let us move on with the generations that to understand who they are, because they're going to come soon, and we should be ready for that. They were born in the stage when Internet became generally accessible, and many of them learned to swipe before they learned to speak. So for them, it is, it is their element. And uh, a huge number of people probably more than 90% of Ukrainian people, they are in social networks, they share photos there, and they keep uh, logged in. But it is also interesting that for most, 60%, tele uh, television remains the main source of information. Even though I looked at the statistics and it just turned out that about three years ago, 
the percentage of those for whom television was the main source of information was about 90 percent. So actually, it loses its popularity uh, rapidly. And uh, this is also conferred by the fact that people have almost stopped reading books because they get information from online. At the same time, they are so immersed in digital, but they have this controversy manifested that they actually understand that too much digital is already not cool. And uh, that's what they say. I spend a lot of time in digital, and I understand that my communication skills need development. So they also they try to be both digital, but at the same time, uh, in reality. And actually, many are really offended when they get together with friends and that somebody looks in the phone and does something over there. So how can we use that? If we offer them an interesting mix of reality and digital, they're yours. All these immersive events that will allow them to be on the verge of digital and reality are going to attract them. And online style also helps a lot. I found two examples which actually get right there. This is an example from the UK. You've probably seen it. And this is the first bar with augmented reality. Of course, it's a challenging thing because it requires a special app. And at the same time, when people get their cocktails and when they point their smartphone on the coaster and they see this interesting mix of reality and life. One more example. Those who watch TV shows, mostly they do it online. So that's why references to any things like that, people are going to be really interested in that. So let's go on. These people, even though they haven't yet traveled, 76% haven't yet left Ukraine. As they are connected to the internet and they have the chance to see everything happening in the world, they already have seen a lot of things. They see what's happening in other countries. They see interesting things. and. Uh, they understand that, that there are much more things than they, there are to that. They have grown up in the time when there wasn't that much uh, discrimination. That's why they are not uh, that stance as Generation X, and that they are rather positive about the future. If we compare it with the with European teenagers, European Zs actually have 15% less of those who are, con uh, who are sure they are going to have a good future. At the same time, People take in not just interesting events, they also take in interesting cultural features, like all this stuff with tolerance and all that. Plus, what the paradox is about, uh, if we talk about Ukrainian young people, they have wider outlook on life than their parents, on the one hand. But on the other hand, they also follow in cultural traditional rails. And they talk about that as well. I am going to be a better version of my parents. So no matter how better and more advanced, more intelligent I may consider myself in comparison with my parents, I'm going to have family, children, all that by 30 years of age. And actually, they really have demand for, they really want to travel. They want to conquer the world. But for now, many don't have this opportunity. That's why they use the digital to do that. How can we use that? This issue of being open and all that, this is manifest in communication. For this generation, it's very important when they talk to them on par in an informally and open way, because any formalism really drives them crazy. They want to reinvent something. They want this to be easy. And uh, any attempts to have standard approaches for them doesn't work, especially as this is the generation which is very creative, wants to do it all themselves. That's why, how can we use that? Maybe that's not the best examples. You probably uh, know better ones. Try to have something interesting for them, like some archaic things, like what would you have liked? Or how can I surprise you today? Or some personalization that is not your drink is ready, but for example, eternal youth elixir for the beautiful lady or something like that. You know that better than me, probably. Well, these people are also very creative. They 
take care of aesthetics. They have seen many things in Ukraine and beyond. Uh, that's why they really value the design, the packaging of what they're given. And uh, it is very important for them to broadcast their image into the net so that they are perceived in a correct way. What has been said, they have great relationships with their parents, more than 90% actually never have quarrels with them and all that. They live in peace. Actually, it's really interesting that even though they live with parents, they really want to be independent. Even in some very simple things like where to go and what to do. And uh, at the same time, they they are looking for some new and interesting experiences which they will be able to share through Instagram or other social networks. And for them, this issue of posting photos on Instagram is actually great. So how can we use it? Well, in fact, of course, we need to uh, offer something interesting for them, to surprise them, though it's not that easy to surprise them because they've seen a lot already online what's going on in other countries. But if we give something interesting for them about the texture, about the flavor, about the entourage, the guys from Barmerglot Bar showed interesting things which were never that demanded, like foam things or smoky things, like this is more for the generation of Z, so just save it for two years because they will like it. They would like to post it in Instagrams and they will promote you on their own. So the experience they get, they will broadcast it further. There's one more example who's seen Breaking Bad TV show. This is wonderful examples from that show. They made the trailer, the van, the place for cooking. That's a wonderful idea because, again, it's uh, corresponding to the styles of the uh, TV show and all the smoky things we use there. One more example. This is an example of the bar where you can not only drink the cocktail, but you can feel it through the flavor, through the aroma and feelings or tactile feelings on your skin because those cocktails are just being diffused so you can hear the music and feel the smell, how it uh, is on your skin, and you can even pat the snake so you're getting the totally full immersive experience when you're totally immersed there. You can't help sharing it. As those people grew up during the crisis, they're rather critical because uh, they're criticizing everything they do. They have the lack of the ideals and authorities. They're rather skeptical to everything which is going on, so they're not that interested in the politics. Less than 10% of people are interested in politics. Of course, they want to become rich because they want to travel, they want to do something interesting and so on. But the most interesting point is that those people have a wonderful trust channel with their relatives, which is again interlinked with what they like to do. They like to share their new findings and themselves in an interesting entourage or anywhere in the social media. So it's a nice way to attach to this audience, to give them a certain experience that they will share. And this is a wonderful recommendation for their friends who will rush there too. Still, on the one hand, they always have the, on, the, on their mouth of word those global marks and brands. But they are not that inspired by them. They value some smaller stories which are rather authentic. So if the brand has a very certain position, not only about the heritage from, uh, on a yearly basis, it may work too. So it's very important for them to communicate with them to be sincere, honest, and the certain principal positions, but equal attitude. Because so far, they don't have enough money. So any attempts to impose on them rather expensive things are failing because they feel it's fake. So if you do something which is uh, too expensive, it would never work. 
And as for the brands with high authority, honestly, though they don't trust them, they speak about them. So if you use something famous in your cocktails, at least for them it will be a distant sign to trust. We've seen that all of those people are running, the skiing, and really this is the generation which is dealing with their health much more because one third of them is not drinking alcohol at all. This is the Ukrainian statistics and half of them are drinking alcohol from time to time. And as for the healthy lifestyle, they are always there and it's incredibly important for them. What else we can speak about as for the rebellion epoch of X's when punks were not dead and everybody got wasted and that was perfect. It's not working for them. For the Zs, they don't like those consequences. They like to be on the drive. They want to be on the wave and to socialize, but not to have any consequences, not to have hangover, and for it not to harm their health. That's what's mentioned by Diego just before me. So it again suits this topic. So for them, how we can solve it with the cocktails, low uh, containing alcohol cocktails. And I've seen wonderful examples, so I will not show my cocktails, which I found online. I apologize for that. So those people, because they're rather young and because they're in fact not that immersed into different things, they're rather superficial about the bar culture. And that is why there is a subtle moment. I've had lots of stories that such people were scared off by the snobbish attitude of the bartenders. I can imagine that. You are the bartender, so you're having lots of years of experience. You're rather skillful. You consider it to be real art to understand how to mix it, this wonderful thing. And then someone comes to you and says, no, mix it in this way. Or I don't understand what you mean, just some mixes, blends, I don't understand that. Just mix something, I don't know what. And of course it can offend people. But there are children in this bar culture, so you need to have the certain attitude to that. Because if too many of things are mentioned in the recipe, they say, OK, maybe I should try it. I'm open for everything. Pour it down. But we shouldn't expect for them the deep understanding. For you, for them, you should be the ones who will take their hand and lead them along the way of growing up in the bar culture. Because on their own, they're not ready to immerse into that. I had a metaphor. Just imagine that you are an art criticist and uh, a young guy is brought to you who wants to get to know about that. If you show suprematism to him, he will say, what? Squares? Triangles? What the shit? And even Picasso, he will say, I'm sorry, I'm drawing much better. It's not the art. You should show him or her something familiar, what they saw at the uh, candies, wraps, the bears in the pines forest so they have to be gradually taught to that because on their own they will never head along this way so we've mentioned the main points and issues which are important for this generation summing it up seven key pieces of advice which can be taken and used the first in digital they are in digital so you should offer a certain mix of digital and reality they will go there because it's their territory further on they hate formalism any attempts to be too standard with them, too uh, or, or superficial, or they will, it will never work. They need that immersiveness and they want to feel that you are equal with them. As they've seen a lot, even online, but they've seen it, try to do something unusual, to make something unusual for them. I'd, I've seen lots of interesting examples which can really surprise uh, the client of the bar, the consumer who is not uh, uh, that easily surprised. They can earn this, uh, you can earn this earn social currency which will promote you because they post it online. And as they have this channel of trust with their relatives and friends, it will perfectly promote you as well. Their position, well, they do value brands, people with a certain principle what stand for something. Maybe not that 
well known, but certain positions should be felt. And sincerity you're speaking to them with, it can play a significant role. Further on, they are for the health, so give them cocktails, which at least make it visible that they don't drink strong alcohol, but they just drink something bright and interesting which allows them to be on the drive and doesn't have harmful consequences for their health. The sixth, try to be those leaders. Try the, uh, to help them to understand this culture. Do not offend them because they are little so far. Just show them the interest and they will stay with you. There are only six here, right? Okay. So the seventh is from me. In fact, any professional growth in this or that way is connected with the interest. When you're interested to deal with that, it is going on on its own. So I'm really impressed and excited by the atmosphere which is here for those several days and by the people who are doing that. It really inspires me and excites me. So through your inspiration, through your willing, uh, being willing to get this feedback from the reality, whether it works or not, through that, this growth will take place. OK, then. Today, I promised you to tell you about the tool for understanding of people. And I do hope that this tool, the generation theory, will allow you to put another stone into the foundation of your professional development. Thank you.